name is Mamudu Gazibo. Uh, I am from the University of Montreal, but I'm Nigerian, so uh, a very close uh, neighbor. Not so close, but uh, we are all in the ECOWAS community, so I feel like uh, at home. Um, thank you, Daniel, for uh, uh, your presentation, because what I am going to do is, is completely um, in, this, in the same line, because uh, Benin is uh, uh, one of the positive African uh, democratic countries, and what I'm going to do is to look at the positive side of consolidation the deepening of, of democracy in, in, in Benin. Um, so I have four, six points. First, I will briefly give you a background on, on the Benin case, because I wrote another paper maybe seven, eight years ago on uh, transition and foreign aid in Benin. Uh, second, the argument, the data, and uh, the, maybe the substance of the presentation, the four, the, uh, the, the, the three uh, remaining points, foreign aid and the changing pattern, uh, aid's changing pattern in Benin, donor and democratic consolidation efforts, and uh, uh, I will finish with uh, some concluding remarks and um, some recommendations. So the background first. As you know, Benin has been presented uh, in the 70s as uh, uh, a very difficult case in Africa because they used to have uh, military coups every six months. And then in the 90s, things changed. And Benin became what somebody called the laboratory of democratization in Africa, because they had this national conference, which has been replicated in many other countries. Uh, and as I told uh, previously, I studied the Benin case in a paper published in 2005. And what I saw at that time was that uh, foreign aid had a crucial role in helping Benin to uh, do its transition from uh, authoritarian regime to a, a democratically elected uh, president. So the transition in Benin is clearly linked uh, to the uh, donor's role. So they played a crucial role in supporting Benin, uh, whether through budget support or other um, uh, kind of supports. But when it comes to consolidation, it's a, a difficult and a different matter. Because consolidation, as Daniel told it, is very complex. It's a long-term process. And uh, the challenge is to make sure, is to look at what donors do and what role they played in this uh, phase of uh, democratization, which is consolidation. And also, uh, what I will try to do is to show how donors' intervention in Benin changed uh, in, the in the 20s because of internal and external uh, events, turning points, that uh, impacted their behavior uh, regarding their intervention in Benin. So what we can see also is that uh, if you look at uh, the transition and the, the political aspects of democratization, foreign aid played a crucial role. But when it comes to the deepening of democracy, uh, I think the achievements are much more mixed uh, in particular when you look at governance and uh, corruption and so on. So the argument is that uh, while foreign aid has been effective in certain areas such as elections, civil society promotion, uh, the, the impact is very weak when you look at uh, other aspects of uh, democratization, of the deepening of democracy like good governance, the rule of law and accountability. And the second aspect is that uh, although Benin is, the, is a very positive case, uh, the donors are frustrated with the lack of democratic deepening. And some of them, like Denmark or Switzerland, are even tempted to withdraw their aid. And this is unfortunate because I think uh, it's just uh, like a vicious cir circle. The Benin has, uh, I think, so many efforts to do to promote, to improve governance. And because of the lack of, uh, of success in, on, on some points, donors want to withdraw. And this, I think, ultimately can affect uh, Benin's, the quality of democracy in Benin. So this is why I will end with um, some um, uh, propositions, some recommendations, because I think uh, if we don't think about some new, some innovative policies, uh, Benin will maybe uh, uh, will, will no longer be um, the positive example uh, we used to 
to see. So uh, the, the, the paper is, is completely based on qualitative uh, research. And uh, the main, most of the data I collected come from Ed data, but this is the case, I think, uh, with all the, the papers. Some from uh, uh, other sources, but uh, ultimately, Ed data was the main uh, uh, source of, uh, of, of data. And also, the, maybe the most important aspect of the paper is that it's, it is based on field research I conducted in June in June 2011. 2000 in, in Benin, and they met foreign embassies, donor community, and so on. And also the approach to consolidation, but I will not talk about it because Daniel did a very good job. It's, it's based not only on procedures, but also uh, institutions and the substance, because usually uh, authors make the distinction because between democracy as a procedure and democracy as a substance. So because the uh, paper is focused on deepening democracy in Benin. It's fo it focuses not only on procedures, but al al also on deeper aspects of uh, democratization. So foreign aid in Benin, I think, has changed. Because in the 90s, Benin was seen as the laboratory of democratization in Africa. And someone said that Benin uh, received foreign aid as West G East Germany. It's like the same proportion in the 90s. But things have been changing, I think, in the 2000s because of what I said, the lack of progress in some areas of democratization. And also, but, but this, is, this is not like a uniform uh, trend because it depends on the donors you focus on. If you look at bilateral donors, for example, France has been traditionally Benin's most important uh, donor. Uh, France's uh, presence has been at constant, but the U.S., for example, changed. Uh, for example, the democracy assistance project has been stopped because of this lack of, uh, of assistance. And also, if you look at the other donors, the multilateral donors, for example, most some of them are not involved in democracy promotion at all. So, the, what is going on on the political landscape does not affect their intervention. But others, like the European Union, have a very different kind of intervention. They focus on, on democracy promotion. And this, if you look at, at what they are doing since the, the 2000, things have, I think, changed a lot. And also, the other aspect uh, I wanted, uh, I saw when I did the field research is that sometimes we just look at the uh, big donors like the European Union, France, and so on. But sometimes, those who do the best job, I think, when it comes to democracy promotion are not always the big countries. Denmark or Switzerland or uh, Holland are sometimes much uh, more involved in democracy promotion in Benin than the bigger countries, like France, which has all these kind of links and, and, and its intervention sometimes is guided also by internal political matters. So this is why. The classification of donors between big and multilateral is misleading because you have to go through what is going on and, and see really what each actor does. Uh, and also, what you see in the case of Benin is that from the 2000, you have a, like a volatility of aid. If you look at these two figures, for example, you can notice that in 2001 and two, from 2000 to 2002, aid foreign aid dropped significantly. And this is the same from 2006 to 2008. And this is, uh, this is because uh, generally in Benin, donors' uh, intervention uh, change depending on the political clim cl climate. In post-electoral, uh, when post-electoral tensions occur, for example, like in 2001 and 2007, or when you have scandals, corruption, and so on, you see that foreign aid, and in particular democracy aid, tend to, to drop. And this is, I think, a, a problem because uh, it's sometimes in the very period when the country needs to be assisted that donors withdraw. And I think this is a, a very problematic uh, situation. And this is the same if you look at the budget aid. Uh, but there are other, uh, many other issues explaining why you can see these donors fatigue in a country which is considered as one of the most positive cases. So there is a fluctuation 
And this is something which is very preoccupying, I think, in the case of a country like Benin. And also, what we have to look at is that donors, and I said it before, are not necessarily in, in, uh, involved in democracy promotion, because democracy promotion, as Daniel said, it is one aspect of foreign aid among many others. So I try to focus particularly on democracy promotion, but sometimes you can't avoid talking about other kinds of aid because they are linked. It's not so easy to disaggregate between democracy promotion and other kind of uh, foreign aid. Uh, but if you look at democracy promotion in particular and on the, the effort to promote consolidation, some multilateral agencies like the U EU or the UNDP or some bilateral countries like Denmark, the Netherlands, France are much more involved on these kinds of, uh, of, of issues. So if we concentrate particularly on uh, donors and democratic consolidation efforts in Benin, as Daniel told it, um, if you focus on the positive side of consolidation, it means that you focus on the deepening of democracy. And because Benin is considered like an electoral democracy, they don't have the same kind of problems like uh, Togo or, uh, I don't know, Zimbabwe and so on. The, the, the question is how to deepen what is already there. So I, I will just uh, um, focus on some specific points like uh, the budget aid and how foreign aid uh, 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 tries to help Benin uh, consolidate central institutions uh, so that uh, the state uh, can better manage what is uh, going on. If you look at this, you have many um, uh, foreign donors like the European Development Fund, the UNDP, Denmark, and so on, who are really involved in this kind of support to, to strengthening central institutions. Because some w w one thing we tend to forget, only five minutes, so I will try to to, to go fast. Uh, an aspect on which we don't insist enough is that democracy is possible only when you have a strong state. When I think I talk about a strong state, it doesn't mean uh, strong men. It means strong institutions. It means procedures. It means uh, that you, uh, the, the state can fulfill its, its, its task. So this is why this aspect is very important, although we tend to neglect it. And civil society also, as Daniel told it, is one of the main democracy assistance program. And Benin is a perfect case from this point of view. You have many uh, civil society organization, uh, many groupings supported by donors. And I think this is very important because if you look at the electoral uh, cycles in Benin, what is amazing is that usually uh, NGOs and citizens are very confident about the issue, uh, about how it will end. So I think this is important because civil society has been supported and um, they, have, they are very strong. They have created many original, uh, I think, um, um, uh, institutions like these peace infrastructures. We can discuss about it later. And also uh, uh, many other uh, programs in the which target media, uh, gender programs, or, or the unions. Second, what the, the other very important, uh, I think, arena is elections. And uh, with civil society, this is the, I think, the arena where you can see the, 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 the best example of how uh, democracy promotion can work. And uh, here you have a, a table with uh, the last, during the last election, Benin, experimented a, an electoral list, and uh, it has been supported by donors. And I think it, 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 it worked, even though they, they had many problems. The opposition were not very, was not very happy about it. But I think at, at, at last, it, it's better than the system they had before. Also, the other point is political parties and party system. And you know it, if you don't have a stable and functioning party system, democracy can't work. And this is, this is another arena which is very difficult for donors because they, 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 they think just don't know how to, to deal with it. You know, party volatility is very high in Benin. Uh, sometimes, as you know, some parties, they, they don't have more than five, 10 people. 
And so it's very difficult to, to, to have programs that work. And also, people are, are not very confident about political parties in Benin. When I, I conducted this field research, it's very, it's very clear that political parties are not very um, popular in, 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 in Benin. So another aspect is, is in the positive side of, of democratization is strengthening account accountability. And this is another very, very difficult issue because it's a matter of internal it's a domestic affair, and uh, uh, donors they can't um, uh, they they cannot but being involved in it because their funds are are, are involved. But it's very difficult because Benin is uh, also one of the I think countries which where corruption is a very uh, preoccupying issue. Um, but what some countries try to do, and I think this is very important, this is why I put it in red, the Netherlands, for example, their cooperation is entirely uh, uh, targeting what they, are, they, they call checking mechanism and institutions. So they have, all the, the funds they have are put to strengthen those institutions like anti-corruption anti institutions, like the, uh, ministry, in the ministries they have inspections and so on. So, uh, all they do is try to focus on this kind of institution to make sure that they are uh, uh, strengthened and able to uh, fulfill their, their task. Or the financial, financial chamber of the Supreme Court, for example, uh, which has, uh, is supported by many donors and in particular by the Netherlands or Denmark. Okay, so what, what the, the, the result which comes out from the the, the paper is that Benin is a, is, can be considered as an electoral democracy, and even many authors considered Benin as a consolidated democracy. But this is from the procedural perspective. If you look at the more the deeper aspect of democracy, like consolidation, like the quality of democracy, they have a long way to, to go because uh, the success when which we can see in the framework, in the procedures, are not replicated when it comes to the substance, corruption, uh, lack of responsiveness, and so on. And this is why I tried in the paper to, to uh, propose some recommendations. For example, one of the recommendations I, I, I think is that they need, Benin need, needs a national consensus on electoral issues. I talk about the, the electoral list, the informatized electoral list. It is good, but it lacks a consensus, uh, a national consensus. And donors usually, when it comes to election, they just wait until the electoral uh, year and they put some money. UNDP generally functions as the umbrella to how to use the funds. And I think they have to change the the perspective and see, as Daniel told it, elections as a process and not as, as a, a, a specific event. Second aspect is, I think, and, and this comes from the, the what I saw in the, what the Netherlands does. I think we have to strengthen these kind of institutions that focus on on on, on the checking of what government does. So these kind of mechanism and institution that monitor governance issues, I think, should be uh, strengthened and foreign aid, the foreign donors can play a very important role, I think, with regard of this. Another aspect is that what I saw is that donors usually have training programs, they have seminars and so on, but usually these are not cross-cutting in initiatives. They, they took, took, take the journalists, for one session, and then the unions, and so on. I think they, they need to have a, another kind of uh, perspective because uh, the consolidation and the deepening of democracy is, is very complex and, uh, and is multifaceted, and people need to know all the faces uh, of it. And finally, I think um, um, I, I said that foreign aid tend to fluctuate depending on the political climate. This is, this is unfortunate because the consolidation and the deepening of democracy, if you look at Latin America or even developed countries, is very complex. And uh, we need to see it as a long-term process and not something which we evaluate only uh, with regard to what happens in the year or during an election. Thank you.